I'm going to close the Tiger Objects collection and have a look at the Rig collection instead. And that's where Armature is. Right, and I'll take the opportunity to make a brand new Armature and merge the two at the end so you can see how that can work. So we'll go to the Add menu and we'll add a single bone. There we are. And this is called Armature. So I'll just call it Arm so that I know that's what I'm dealing with. And in Edit Mode, not in Object Mode. As you can see here, Object Mode's got a few transforms on it. I'm just going to press Alt-G to take that back to zero. And then in Edit Mode, I'm going to move this bone around. Moving things around in Edit Mode is normally the best practice. And I'm also going to turn on Wireframe, just so I can see a little bit more of the wires that make up these shapes. I'll take the head of the bone and put it somewhere along the lines of there. And I think I'll come to object mode and just make things a little bit more transparent so that I can see precisely where this is going. Back into edit mode and I'll put it pretty much on the tip of the curve. Now I'll take this bone and put it there on the elbow. Then I'll press E and pull this bone up to the wrist and then I'll press E again and pull that to the end of the hand. There we go. Now I could have come in here, grabbed this point, control S, snapped the 3D cursor to that point, and then back into the bone, grab the bone, and selection to cursor. It's not really that important, so I don't think there's any need to do that. But it is probably the very best practice if you want to be exact. Just undo that. It knocked my elbow bone slightly back. Right. I'll just turn the 3D cursor off for now. Now that we have this, I'm going to do a little bit of labeling. So I'll call this upper arm. I'll call this the lower arm. And I'll call this the paw. If I look under my armature, under armature free, and hopefully named, I have upper arm, lower arm, and paw. And I do think I'll take the opportunity to call this the arm.armature. Right. Now it's time to add the IK chain. So we'll go into pose mode and we'll select the bone that we want to bend, which in this case is this one because I'd like it to bend at the elbow. We'll go to the constraints and we'll select the inverse kinematics. There we are. I'll just give this a try. So far, so good. Let's fill in some of the information. So our armature is, is simply arm and the controlling bone is going to be the paw so that when I move this paw around it bends but look at that we can't actually move now I don't mind this stretching so much because it's such a simple because a because a grease pencil object is so simply shaded I don't think you'll notice and the stretch might be quite nice so I'm just simply going to go to the edit mode alt P and clear the parent this is now free to move which means in pose mode it's also free to move now, I don't really have any need for a pole vector because this character is only ever going to bend his arm down because he's a two-dimensional character. But what if I want to flip the whole arm around so that it's actually pointing upwards instead? That's where a pole vector could come in quite handy. So I will add one for that reason. I'll do Shift A to add a bone and I'll just lock it to the Z-axis and pull it down like that and shrink it a little bit. That can be my pole vector. Back to pose mode the pole vector. It will be the arm armature and the bone will be the pole vector. Now when I move it, the arm bends like this. If I grab the pole vector, I can flip the arm upwards like that as well. So that'll be quite handy if I decide that I want the arm to be this way around instead. Okay, let's add a clavicle because it's always nice to have a clavicle on the end of one of these bones. So again, we'll go back to edit mode. I'll press shift A again and I'll just put this over here this time. I'll grab the head, but rather than pulling it down like this, I'm going to select this one, Shift S, and put the cursor to the selected. Now, I can't see the cursor because I've turned it off, but I think I'll just leave it off because the cursor will still function quite happily. I'll then select the tail of this bone, Shift S, and tell the selection to go to the cursor. There we go. Now, this can be my clavicle bone, and I think I'll just tell Blender that it's going to be roughly there. That's fine. Now I'll select this bone, I'll shift select this bone and control P and I'll choose connected. Now when we go into pose mode, 
you can see that the IK chain just got a bit upset there. So what's happened is the IK is first of all pointing backwards so we'll need to alter the pole vector angle so that it's still pointing down but also our chain length is set to zero so it's including all the bones which isn't actually what I wanted. I just wanted to include one, two, one, two. Notice how it immediately all snapped back to where it's supposed to be and we're bending again as normal. Now if I grab this and rotate it around look at that and that enables me to shrug my character's shoulder like that which is kind of cool. I can also pull this around and create some nice shoulder shape. I'll press A to select all of these and I'll press Alt G to return that to where it was and Alt R just to get rid of any rotations. Now I don't need to change the pole angle because once I changed the chain length to only two everything corrected itself and the pole vector is still working as expected. Right, let's try binding this grease pencil object to this armature now. 